Welcome to Contemporary Retirement. Contemporary Retirement is a public interest program focused on the retirement community. Every program has segments on legal, financial, and health issues affecting the retirement community. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a major grant from the Family Heritage Trust Company. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored by Family Heritage Trust Company. The Family Heritage Trust Company is an independent bank chartered trust company established by local professionals to provide fiduciary services including fee-based investment advice, trust services, retirement planning, and tax planning. The Family Heritage Trust Company is committed to client service in our communities. For more information, call the Family Heritage Trust Company at 301-631-5900. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a grant from R. Thomas Murphy & Associates, P.C. R. Thomas Murphy & Associates is one of Franklin County's leading law firms, emphasizing estate, trust, elder law, and medical assistance planning. Welcome to the Is It Legal feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various legal issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Tom Murphy from the R. Thomas Murphy Law Firm with offices Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McConnellsburg. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good morning. Tom, we are talking a little bit last week about continuing care retirement communities and many of them are faith-based organizations which do have a benevolence and they have rules in which you can comply and, com and get the benevolence, mm -hmm. but those rules do not match the Medicaid rules. Exactly. They are two different things and so people in many cases are confusing those things and they will see some contractual language that that sort of confuses the issues even further. And so the reality, they're two separate animals and they need to be dealt with separately. And so when I'm representing a family and they're in a, one of these facilities with a benevolence, you know, we, we attune to the benevolence rules mm -hmm. because if the family were to run out of money, the facility does not have to keep them. Right. So you have to comply with their rules but that only is applicable to less than nursing home level of care. Exactly. So anything short of nursing is generally private pay. Now there's a little bit of veterans money and things of that sort, but if a family follows the rules and truly runs out of money in those you know, benevolent situations, there's support. But once someone crosses the threshold into a nursing home, then we have lots of options to pursue other dollars that aren't facility based. And the thing about the nursing home is the nursing home is going to be, get compensated within the Medicaid rules for the services that they're providing, whereas if a person ran out in assisted living, they're not getting compensated as a rule, and right. so you, you really need the support of that facility to be sure that that person is going to be secure for the rest of their lives. Exactly, and so there is this relationship that has to be abided by between the facility and the resident, and those rules change over a period of time based on the level of care you're receiving. And as we're representing families, you know, we're middle class families, they need to retain resources in order to pay for all those lower levels of care because even if you're going into a facility that has a benevolence, they're doing a financial evaluation of you because in reality they don't want to have to use their benevolence to pay for your care, which means you need to be showing them resources or else they may not accept you. That's a good point. You really do have to show your cards, but once you do that, uh, there is an agreement as to, you know, we will accept you if you were to, you know, spend all this money over the rest of your lifetime. And so we oftentimes tell people, sometimes they get cute with the disclosures that they're giving to yeah. the institution. We tell people every day, there is no reason not to tell the truth because in reality, in terms of what we're, we're dealing with, which is the nursing home aspect of it, not the lower levels of care, it doesn't matter what you've told them. We're still in a position to do whatever we can do anyway, but if you fail to tell them what you have, you may not look attractive enough for them to take you. That's a good point because they're doing a calculation to determine if based on your life expectancy and your money, are you going to be able to pay your way? And they certainly will frown on someone with less than enough resources and they probably won't get into that facility. And yet oftentimes when you're dealing with a standalone assisted living facility, their financial restrictions are significantly lower because the facilities that have nursing homes attached to them are not only looking at sufficient resources to pay the assisted living, they want to see some resources to pay several years in a nursing home. Sure, and so that calculation is really important to your admission. And so just like when you fill out college applications, when you're looking to apply and be admitted to a facility, you have to have a very positive and pleasing application for that facility. 
But on the other hand, if a person has limited means, we can have them in assisted living. It's just not going to be attached to a nursing home which has a benevolence. Right. It means at some point in time down the line, we will be looking at a readmission to another facility if they need nursing home level of care, and at which point we're going to have to cross that bridge then. And so sometimes people are quite shocked to find that there's two different standards. It depends on whether or not the assisted living has a nursing home attached to it or not. Exactly. And you need to know the differences. And that's where we spend a great deal of our time explaining those and what happens next so that someone has a one, three, five, ten year plan knowing where they're going to be living. And one of the things that we're telling people every day is resources is what gives you options. And when people start giving away their resources, you know, we're just saying, you cannot be doing that. You do not have control of your life if you've given away the resources that would have otherwise made you an attractive candidate to be admitted into maybe a more desirable facility. That's a good point. There's, there's strategies you put in place at the right time, but the throw it all out there, give it away is not your best option. And so as we sit with clients, you know, we're not only evaluating their legal documents, we're looking at their finances. We, you know, we're well experienced in these areas and we know what the strengths and weaknesses of the facilities in our practice areas right. are. And not all facilities are suitable to all folks. And mm -hmm. sometimes if there's a husband and wife, it's a different style of facility than if it's a widow or a widower mm -hmm. where they don't need to necessarily be in the same facility as a surviving spouse. Yeah, and those are all excellent points and things we explore with clients to make sure they're aware of their unique circumstances. Tom, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. You're welcome. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Few things in life are as important as family. Leave your insurance worries to us, Wright Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. Every life that meets its end leaves a heart for love to mend. Sister, brother, family, friends are left to carry on. When the loss seems more than you can bear, it's nice to know that we'll be there at Double Save by Call Ed Lowe to help put your mind at ease. Welcome to special guest feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various issues which are of importance to the retirement community. With me today is Hugh Gordon, Vice President Fund Development and Programs for Interfaith Housing. Welcome to the show, Hugh. Well, thank you for having me, Michael. Interfaith Housing is one of my favorite organizations because it provides just an incredible service to the community, whether it be assisting people in affordable housing, senior housing, mm -hmm. but it was a not-for-profit organization created in 1990. Tell us a little bit about your history. Well, uh, we have been around for a while. We, uh, during that period of time, we've, in our footprint, built almost 1,400 affordable either rental units or um, home ownership opportunities for people. Uh, and we've uh, had a lot of programs and workshops that uh, have been instituted and put into place to help people uh, get ready for home ownership. So what we see here is the bricks and mortar is pretty easy to see and you've you know, had a you know, big footprint in our entire viewing area, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Maryland, in, in terms of developing those. Although based in Frederick, you've gone all over the state to help adjust for that. But also a, a similar mission is, is to say we're not just building bricks and mortar for people, we're educating people on how to do it themselves. Right, Michael, you know, a lot of people know us because of the sticks and bricks we build, but we're all about people. Um, you know, the, the individuals, they're going to occupy the affordable um, units, and there's a lot of education uh, that's required to get them prepared to, to live there and live there stably and then exist there uh, afterwards because we deal with them along a spectrum um, from the time be before they're ready to occupancy and then beyond. And 
you know, no disparagement in any particular group of people, but the housing that you're really focused on is intended to be mainstreamed. It's not mm -hmm. intended to, you know, have some appearance of, you know, for people who are of lesser means. Oh, no. I mean, the, the communities that we're building, and of course, based on the low-income housing tax credits, there's certain requirements. So they've got energy efficient features, and they've got community rooms, and they've got passive recreational areas. These are, these are very nice, nice communities. And some of the senior housing, which is very important, they're secure. You know, you, you can't just walk in. Absolutely. Uh, in, in several of the new communities, we've got uh, exterior security cameras that tie right into police stations so that they can monitor the, uh, the communities. And oftentimes it's part of looking at the constituent base. I know you try to build those units where there's public transportation available, mm -hmm. access to services. We do. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, a lot of people, um, I don't think, understand who the face of affordability is. You know, we're, we're building these for seniors, but we're also building them for people in the workforce, for teachers and nurses and first responders and people that might be serving you dinner in your favorite restaurant. Yeah, and two wage earner families that really cannot fit the classic mode of acquiring a regular house. Absolutely. We're, we're 20 to 60 percent of area median income, and of course that varies depending on where you are, um, but it certainly provides uh, more affordable rents or more affordable mortgage payments uh, that they can find in the retail marketplace. Now, one of the big uh, charities in the Frederick County area, the Osherman Foundation, has given you a grant to try to help people acquire housing. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, them. they're they're great, uh, and they have uh, this year in December provided us with uh, the Osherman Family Foundation provided us with a twenty thousand dollar grant. It's a matching grant, so what we have to do is go out and find the funds uh, and raise them, and then we submit for for a reimbursement. But there's a critical piece of that that's always uh, the most difficult in putting it together, and that's finding the new donors that represent a certain percentage of it uh, based on the covenants and the requirements of the covenants. Well, the interesting thing is like the, the, their foundation is oftentimes like a lot of other foundations. They don't want to solve people's problems. They want to engage them in a process they can solve their own problems. So in this case, they'll do a matching grant, but you got to go out and get some other people engaged. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, they, they want to understand what it is that we're going to be using the money for and uh, programs are, are what we used as our basis of that um, because they understand how important it is to get people ready for housing. So Interfaith Housing is a not-for-profit, you know, but it's a blend of not-for-profit entrepreneurial spirit in order to build these houses. You have to have a forward view of it. You have to go out and get into the financing you know, of all types of level, both government and private financing. Mm -hmm. But in this instance here where you're trying to help people develop the opportunity to get their own housing, you need some donors. Tell us how they can participate. Well, and you're right, because a lot of the sticks and bricks are funded through um, government funds, through low-income housing tax credits, but all of our other programs are funded through these kind of grants and, and, and donations. Uh, the quickest way to, uh, to donate is either to um, you know, send some, a check directly to us at uh, 5301 Bucky's Town Pike, Suite 320, Frederick, Maryland, 21704. Um, or call us at 301-662-4225, and we can certainly give you a, a couple of other ways that you can donate as well. Well, Hugh, great project. Thanks for appearing on our program. Oh, thank you for having me, Michael. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Tranquility at Fredericktown Assisted Living and Memory Care provides a warm, home-like atmosphere that promotes daily life enrichment. At Tranquility, our medical director is a geriatric physician. Our professionals support and understand the various stages associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. We have on-site physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as around-the-clock licensed nurses. For more information, give Tranquility at Fredericktown a call today, because everyone deserves great care. Let us do the caregiving so you and your loved one can embrace life again. Guys, I thought you were supposed to be working in the yard. But Dad, just one more bid on HurleyAuctions.com. If you haven't visited HurleyAuctions.com, you don't know what you're missing. Whether you're buying or selling, antique cars, tractors, boats, or real estate, you can do it all at HurleyAuctions.com. Get to know Dr. Carrie Hesley at Diagnostic Imaging Services. What I find most rewarding is caring for women through our Women's Imaging Center. We have a caring staff that will ease patients through an ultrasound, bone densitometry, breast biopsy, or mammogram. 
Our health team is sensitive to emotions involved in women's imaging and understands that every woman is at risk for breast cancer. Providing the community with a center that is so dedicated to breast health and the imaging needs of women is something special. DIS Women's Imaging Center, providing women with progressive care. Welcome to Contemporary Health Scene. Contemporary Health Scene focuses on the health issues affecting the retirement community. With me is John Kenney, Department, Washington County Department of Social Services, Program Manager, Adult Services. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today. You know, John, we talked a little bit last week about self-neglect being one of the biggest problems in terms of people residing in their homes, oftentimes by themselves. Yes. It is quite a problem and it's very common throughout the older or disabled community. And oftentimes they become super conservative. They're afraid to spend any of their money because they're afraid that they're going to run out of money and as a result of which they will not access the services that A, they might be able to afford or even find out that there might be some assistance for it. Yes, that happens a lot of times and sometimes it's difficult to convince the person that it's actually raining and they need to spend some, dip into that rainy day fund and purchase some services in order to maintain themselves uh, safely. And as, as we work with this, I know that we mentioned at the end of the program last week that your goal is to keep people in their own homes, not to, you know, to take away their liberties. Yes, that's right. We always try to do that. We, we try to maintain the person uh, in the setting that they would like to, to be in uh, and usually in the least restrictive environment possible. Now, as we talk about this, we know that many of the programs we're talking about are statewide across the state of Maryland, and we also know that the adjoining states have very similar programs as well. The departments on whole, their goal is to keep people independent, not to deprive them of their independence. Sure. I think all the states do that, and I know all the counties in Maryland have very similar programs to the ones we have here in Washington County that are, uh, have a focus on maintaining the person uh, in their home or other least restrictive environment. Now we have another problem in that we have a, typically a couple in which one spouse is the primary caregiver and being the primary caregiver 7 by 24 is exhausting that person. I know you have some potential help for that as well. Yes, uh, we have some funding to to be able to supplement uh, people's ability to, to purchase respite care. Uh, a lot of times respite care uh, is provided uh, by having somebody come into the home and take care of the disabled person while while the, per the normal care provider is able to do some other things. Uh, the other model that's commonly used is we'll use funds to pay for adult daycare uh, or another setting in which the person is able to have an outing, uh, get some care by, uh, by the adult daycare. And one of the the adult daycare providers in the region all are aware of these funding sources. We encourage people, even if you haven't called the Department of Social Services, you talk to the daycare facilities, they are aware of some of these options and they will assist you in trying to get them. Oh yes, the, you know, the adult daycare center uh, you know, is aware of these things and uh, sometimes we'll make a referral to the department for, for help with one of, of their clients. All right, and then of course, you know, we have situations where people's homes are, you know, potentially unsafe, and I know you have some programming to try to help make them more user-friendly. Yes, we work with some other agencies in order to uh, make some uh, modifications to a person's home, uh, purchase some assistance in order to uh, make it perhaps uh, safer to get around using a walker or widening door frames, et cetera, to make it wheelchair accessible. Or ramps. Or putting in a ramp. The ramp project is one of our favorites uh, because, because, you know, they will find a way to put that ramp in for uh, minimal cost and oftentimes no cost to the person. Now, I know you have another program, which I think is very important. We have people out there of limited means. Uh, they're not going to be able to afford an assisted living facility. They do not have family support. You have a program to help come up with a very program very similar to a foster for children. Yes, we do. It's called Project Home. It's really an adult foster care program. Uh, it's individual uh, families uh, who can take one to three people into their home to provide care to them. Uh, it's not nursing home type care. Uh, they're not skilled providers, uh, but they are given training uh, in being able to meet the uh, needs that you generally find among older people or people with some disabilities that need assistance 
in activities of daily living, uh, like meals and laundry and uh, keeping things clean, uh, maybe some help with uh, getting to the bathroom, that type of thing. Uh, so they, they provide care to people and we have the ability to apply uh, with them for, uh, it's called uh, public assistance to adults. Uh, that helps uh, supplement their ability to pay, to pay the provider. Uh, they uh, keep a little bit of their money each month for their personal needs. Uh, we usually also arrange for them to get uh, into a uh, adult day program uh, or other setting that they might prefer uh, so that they have uh, some uh, alternative experiences during the week. So if somebody needs some kind of assistance, John, how can they get a hold of you? They usually would just call the department, uh, Adult Services, at 240-420-2155. John, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the Ferrograph. Thank you. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. The Community Foundation strives to be a forward-thinking organization. We are assessing needs, working with donors to see things differently so that Frederick County can be its best. It's a wonderful place for all of us to live, work, and play. We look forward to addressing the future needs of the community. Visit frederickcountygives.org and learn how you can start to see things differently, too. Albright, Crumbacker, Mal, and I tell are a full-service firm that provides elder care services, including managing incoming bills, bill payment, depositing checks, balancing bank statements, and preparing, planning, and filing personal tax returns. Put your mind at ease and call us today. Welcome to the Making Sense feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various financial issues affecting the retirement community. With me today, Sandra Miller, Senior Vice President at the Family Heritage Trust Company. Welcome to the show, Sandy. Thanks for inviting me, Michael. Sandy, oftentimes when we look at the older population, they have a sense that I really don't need to do anything other than CDs. Now, why would we question whether that makes sense or not? Well, we all know that nasty word inflation, uh, and that's something that everyone needs to be aware of. And if you take a look at the inflation rate, and then you take a look at the um, minuscule amount that you're getting as far as interest is concerned with CDs, uh, you're actually losing money right at the get-go. And in addition, if you needed to have liquidity, uh, that CD certainly has a, a limitation with regards to its maturity date, and there may also be fees attached to surrender that CD. We're early. seeing some financial institutions in this market area charging 3% for early withdrawal charges on CDs, well in excess of the interest that it earned, which traditionally it was limited to the interest. We're seeing significantly higher fees now. And we've seen a bunch of uh, institutions encourage people to go along with their CDs, and as these interest rates are going up, they are now significantly underperforming what they would have done had you had a more liquid investment. Yes, definitely, because if you're investing um, with a, a certificate, even if you're getting a little bit more in interest on that CD currently, as interest rates continue to rise, you're not going to be able to get out so that you can roll into something with a higher rate without paying that penalty in some instances. And one of the things we talk about, and, and people's eyes glaze over, but we still talk about it anyway, and that's the rule of 72. So if your interest on your CDs was earning 1%, it would mean your money would double in 72 years. But if inflation is three, it means the cost of living doubles in 24 years. So where are you going to get the money? <laughs> you have to have some sort of diversified portfolio that will uh, take advantage of what the investment climate is doing. And one of the things we talk to people about is, is sort of three pots of money. And we say somewhat tongue in cheek, do you invest the money that you're going to use to buy groceries next week? Well, no, you better not, because then you won't be able to eat. <laughs> How about the money you're planning on using to build a new deck next summer? Well, uh, that's uh, not even a good idea at this point, because we don't know where your investment uh, portfolio will be next summer. But most people, once they get past the groceries and building the deck next summer, means they really have no immediate use for the money, which then means it does those dollars become appropriate to consider investing. Right, and I counsel all of my clients that uh, the money that they are investing for their future uh, care, if you will, uh, needs to be a, in a long-term, fully diverse portfolio. And many of them think that long-term 
uh, has something to do with their age, and, and I always let them know the long-term portfolio is going to be in existence longer than you are. But it is totally liquid and it's fully diverse, so it will participate in the market's ups and downs, but it will have a better return uh, than anything that you could get, say for instance, in the CDs. And we talk to people about that all the time. You, in a fully diverse portfolio means you're going to participate with the market. And if you had that appropriate style portfolio, the only people who lost money in 2008, 2009 were the people who actually sold. That's right. They panicked. They, they panicked, they sold, and they weren't there for the recovery on April 9th, 2009 when the market went straight up. And so the reality is, is that when you have those dollars, they're long-term dollars, you know, the statistics show over the last 90 years, the market goes up three out of every four years. And so people get totally fixed on the negative, completely ignoring the fact that if I were to ask you to make an even money bet three to one against, you would say, no, I would never do that. And yet they're doing it every they're day. They're doing it every day. And, and there is this period of time in, um, you know, the historical data shows that period where we had that 2008-2009 decline. Uh, the 10-year period that that comes uh, into play, actually um, the market was up more like 8 to 9 percent, the fully diverse portfolio in that market was up 8 to 9 percent. And I assume that's the tile for portfolio you run at the family. Yes, we, we have a fully diverse uh, uh, portfolio, all size um, uh, stocks, and uh, it's, it's geographically diverse as well, so there's international flavor to it. And it's fully liquid, um, and it has a long-term approach. So don't take the grocery money and give it to me. That's right. But in the meantime, you know, once you say it's long term, and many times we'll have our 80 year olds say, yeah, but I'm only going to live five or six years. But most of the time they have that money, they're intending it for their children and their grandchildren, which means it needs to be appropriately invested, not underperforming inflation. That's correct. Long term means till you're dead, and then the money continues down for the next generation. Sandy, as always, thanks for taking time to appear on the program. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you from Contemporary Retirement. Remember a more carefree time? Leave your insurance worries to us. Write Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. These days it seems like everything's online and filling out claim forms and receiving and paying bills online isn't always easiest. That's why we at Quality First Insurance encourage you to just give us a call. Let us help. Hi there. I'm Paul Sweeney with Quality First Insurance and it's still just this simple. Our offices are open every weekday where you'll be able to call and speak to real live people. No detail was missed. I'm so glad that I turned to Quality First Insurance. I've recommended Quality First Insurance to my friends who've been just as satisfied. If you're not happy with what you're paying for Medigap, or more importantly, not happy with your service, give us a try. We're locally owned, and we take the time to provide you with the best. We are Quality First Insurance, and our mission is to provide quality products to quality people. Pick up the phone and give us a call today at 800-745-1411.